for coming along today for our final big press conference for Saturday's show, which has sold extremely well. We're assured of a, of a good crowd. There are still a few tickets available. I think Frank will tell you about that in a moment. But I'm massively looking forward to this one because anything involving Josh always has a, a, a very special atmosphere. And of course, the great homecoming for Nicola Adams, who hasn't fought in Leeds for upwards of 20 years, and this is her home, home city, and I'm sure that the fans are going to be here in force to see her perform her second fight as a professional. But it's been a, a bill I'm looking forward to enormously, and these, to these four lads sitting in front of me involved in a couple of undercard fights, which are real pick and fights, which is what we on BT and Box Nation and Frank as a promoter is trying to put on really good competitive undercard fights, not some of the walkover sort of undercards that uh, you sometimes see on other promotions. They are excellent fights and it promises to be an outstanding bill. Promoter alongside me is Frank. Uh, good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, thanks for joining us here today. Obviously we're looking forward to the event uh, First Direct Arena on Saturday. Um, featuring our man here, defending his WBC International Featherweight title against Kiko Martinez, a very well-respected um, fighter. He's fought here on many occasions. Uh, he's had a lot of time to prepare for this fight. It's not been a last-minute job for him. He's been, you, you can see from just looking at him, he's in fantastic uh, shape. And I'm sure he's, uh, he thinks for himself, this is the fight he can't afford to lose. But if he does, he's going to go down the pecking order. But he's got lead zone, Josh Warrington, 24-0. One of the best young fighters in the country who is, over the last, was it probably 10 months now, been out of action for various, uh, for an injury and, and various other, other reasons. But now he's back in the game in a big way. He's going to come through his bike. He picked Kiko for his uh, first bike back. It's a tough bike back for him. And that tells you what Josh is all about. And provided he comes through his bike and he does it in style, we're going to move heaven and earth to get a well tired bike for him here in Leeds, but obviously that's what I would say as a promoter, I'm not, and I'm sure he's not looking past yet, Kiko. It's a great fight for the fans, it's going to be a fantastic atmosphere in Leeds, I've heard so much about it, I've never promoted a show at the, uh, at the arena, and they tell me it's something special, and for me, uh, you know, I love atmosphere in uh, at events, and I love it when the crowd get behind their heroes, and uh, it sounds Saturday should be quite a, a unique evening. It's obviously being sponsored by, sorry, being televised by BT and Box Nation, and uh, you can watch it on either of those channels, and uh, you're going to be in for, I think, a, a really nice boxing. But the most important thing is for Josh to focus, to look good, to come through this fight, and then we, as I said earlier, will move to heaven and earth to get him this opportunity. The buzz which uh, Leeds has, Frank, it, it kind of brings back memories of a, a young lad in Manchester who you were associated with for many years and going back before that to people like uh, Nazim Hamad. I mean, he, he has that sort of a feel, doesn't he? He certainly does, you know, there's no doubt about it. Josh is, uh, you know, he's, he's well liked. Um, and he's well liked because he's a nice guy. He's a, he's got, he's a bit dodgy in the look. <laughs> 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 but, but, but the fact of the matter is he's a, he's, a, he's a really nice guy. He's a fantastic advert for British boxing and for British sport, and, uh, and, and more importantly for Leeds. And uh, you know, there's no doubt about it, becoming Leeds hero. You know, let's hope, I'm sure he'll be more successful, and I hate to say it, than the football team's been. So Saturday night, let's get some, you know, get Leeds get behind him. You know, get, you've got a sportsman here who's a winner, and that's what we want to see. And we see some really great support in there for doing business for Well, we'll hear from the uh, guys up here on the higher table in a moment or two, but before that, let's just talk a little bit about uh, the undercard fights. We've got one for the vacant IBF European title between Josh Leather, who's sitting uh, just to my left there, who's uh, undefeated against Philip Sutcliffe, who's got a similarly impressive, uh, impressive record with just the one defeat. For Josh, it's the chance of a, a breakthrough performance, I guess, but Philip will have very different ideas. He's performed as a, a higher level, he's a tough guy, and has got a very good amateur record himself, as indeed has Josh. So let's uh, just start off with Josh. How important for you is, is this fight? 
this fight is uh, everything to me. Uh, since I was nine years old, I've been boxing in Puglia, and um, always dreamt of these days being being here and um, fighting for the first title. And then this title gets me ranked about 15th in, in the world with the IBF. So these, these are fights I need to uh, step up and uh, win. win the title. It'll be the first time, potentially, that you've had to do a 12 round. You've never been past six. What sort of a, what sort of a difference would that make? Bit sparring, I've had this coming on, I've had, I've had over 130 from, from sparring, so I'm, uh, I've, done, 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 I've done all of our sparring, I've done everything, so I'm prepared, I'm as fully as I can for this fight, and um, I'm ready, ready, ready for what I think. Philip, it's, uh, I guess, the key people will look at this as an outsider, and people say the key is, can you get to him? Are you the strong man? Are you going to be able to walk him down? There's nothing that I watch Josh and he watch everything he's doing. Yeah, he's a good boxer and all that. He's range, he's tall. Open. A fight was nothing. I'm boxing for him there. I'm boxing range and fight was all my life. It means nothing to me at the minute, you know. I've had range and sparring partners the whole lot. And this is the longest camp I've ever had. Seven, seven and a half weeks to train with this. And it's still by me. Made the way for him, Andy. It's going to be a hell of a fight, I think. I hope he's be ready for it. Stoppage win in, in your last fight, Philip, and uh, a really tough one before that, which you came through and beat Chris Jenkins. Would you say that you fought at a higher level than Josh? Of course, yeah. I'm a higher amateur level than him already, but listen, it means nothing. It's all about the night. And Chris Jenkins, all oh, Joe's down. Hell of a man, hell of a fighter. Few decisions made wrong in the camp, but look, we got through the fight and we, we dug deep and mistakes won't be made. Um, this is a different fight altogether. This is a top 15 ranking in the world. No idea if it's on an else fight, which I'm not prepared to lose. So it's going to be a hell of a fight. You're going to be able to keep him off and box your way to a win here, Josh? 100% that I don't want to send that that belt's coming back, back to this belt, back to this side of me. Well, that's just one of uh, a, fa a fascinating undercard, and we've got another one with the guys again sitting just in front of the British Super Bantamweight title. Jazza Dickens making a second defence against Thomas Patrick Ward from up in the northeast. And again, this is, it looks to me as pretty much a pick and fight. And Jazza, you fought at, uh, at the high level, but I know you have lots of respect for the ability of Thomas, don't you? First time you've been in the ring since uh, Rigondeau and uh, the one punch which broke your jaw. Psychologically, have you been able to put that behind you? Yeah, of course. Um, after the fight, you have to put the bar behind you. I don't take much from that fight. You can't get, you can't get much from the original belt side of the name. You can't get much from the original. So I put that bar behind me. You know, I'm trying to be back up there when I was uh, fighting at the top of the I'm going to be back up there as soon as title against Josh Whale, which was a hard fight in itself, and then that defence against Tom's brother Martin, which was a, a bloody battle. Are you, are you, uh, do you think you're going to be taking Tom to a, Thomas to a place where he's not been before? Yeah, well, I don't uh, see it so much about Thomas. I see it as a, that's how I fight, and then, you know, all I fight, you know, I'm going to fight uh, maybe 12 rounds, you know, 12 rounds, I'll still, still be there, I'll still be fighting, I'll still, you know, uh, I've been in the distance for a few times, you know, that's the fight you want to get me always, um, you know, always give it 100% and that will be very important for me and very cheap for this fight and I'm looking forward to it. I'm excited to be on this, this big PC goal, well, you know, start, start a good year with PC, what nation, happy to be here and looking thank you for everyone for the support. Well,
let's hear from Thomas. We, uh, I, I alluded there to that fight against your brother, Martin, which uh, turned out to be one which, did he, did he have 50 stitches or something like that after it? There were head clashes galore. Are you uh, in there sort of hell-bent on taking revenge here? I mean, uh, the fight between uh, Jed and Martin was, uh, was a crack of fire, there was 12 rounds, and uh, it was a bit of a bit of that, but, um, yeah, I mean, uh, the fact that I fight with Jed uh, after being in the band is, um, it's just that he's got the British title. Um, he's a good, good fighter. Uh, like I said, he's um, done 12 rounds and he's uh, been going hard, nice work. But um, I'm looking forward to his um, first big one, so I'll be in East Morton, Box Nation. So I'm just looking forward to doing one out there and having a, having a good fight and going on a good show for the fans. Neil Fan, Neil Fanning, your uh, trainer, had a few things to say about Jazz's use of the head in that fight against Martin. You, uh, any observations? I mean, um, a southpaw between southpaw is uh, going to have a clash of heads, you know. Sometimes it's an arm toss between southpaw and a clash of heads. It's a fight, it's boxing. We're in there to do our job, we're in there to win. And um, whatever happens in the fight, you know, we train for it, we were there to deal with them, we were there to get out of them. So, I'm just hoping to put on a good show on uh, Saturday night and give the fans what they want to see and give them a good fight. I think you, I think you surely will put on uh, a great show because Frank, these are these are evenly matched fights and uh, it's great to see them on the ball, on the bill. They are. They're, uh, you know, as you say, they're pick and fights, and the bottom line of it is the fans benefit benefit from that. There's a lot at stake for uh, the four guys involved in the two fights, and uh, whoever comes through, they must go move onwards and upwards and. Uh, one thing's for sure, please. You, know, you look at the record, you look at the stars, they are going to make good fights. These will be good, good quality fights, without doubt. Yeah, fights that have to be. And again, as a, you know, as a commentator, I look at these and you sometimes have a pretty good idea of how a fight's going to work out. And you look at these guys and you, you, you really don't know. Which, is from, that, from my perspective, as a, you know, working within television, it's great to see fights like that on the card. And I'm personally really looking forward to them. And certainly uh, the bookmakers are good <laughs> odds in the fights. Yeah. Now, before we talk about the main event, Nicola, back here after, what is it, 20 years, something yeah. like that, fighting? Yeah, 20 years, yeah. Um, it's been a long time. First time I boxed in Leeds was when I was 13 years old, and now I'm coming back as a professional boxer. I'm excited and I'm looking forward to Saturday night. Where did you fight? Where did you fight back as a 13-year-old? Where were you? Can you remember it? Yeah, the ex-servicemen's club, only only small place, maybe 100 people, 150 maximum. It's going to be a bit different with 10,000 there when you walk out, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. I've seen the the videos and stuff with Josh on his box, and the crowd is absolutely, absolutely unbelievable. The support that he gets. So I can only imagine what it's going to be like on Saturday. What does it mean to you coming back and, and fighting here in Leeds and moving towards your ambition of fighting for a world title maybe next year? Oh, it means everything to me. Um, Leeds is where I grew up, where I'm from. I've always had so much support from Leeds all the way through my amateur career and now everybody's following me in my professional career now so it's, it's so nice to know that I've got the full backing of the whole city and I'm ready. I want, I want, I'd love to box for a world title tomorrow, but um, I know I've still got a lot to learn and I need to get the, get the rounds under my belt first and then hopefully go for the world title at the end of the year. What's the long-term plan for Nicola Frank? Did you just say, to fight for the world title? This year? Yeah, I think she's quite capable of doing that, but you know, she's only had one fight as a pro, she's got, I know she's got a fantastic amateur, had a fantastic amateur career, but you know, professional boxing has we all know is, is different from sport altogether. And uh, she's also stepping up to three minute rounds. It's, the first, it's another bit of history making. Normally, you know, the ladies box uh, two minutes, she's doing a three minute round, time of three minute rounds. So um, she needs to be you know, a bit more experience. Because again, it's all those unanswered questions that you get with a lot of guys and gals, as they say now, in, uh, when they turn professional, when they start off early in their career, is uh, can they, they, how they can be with it. Distance, you know, what it be like over eight rounds, ten rounds, they're all questions to be answered. What and you need some grounding before you get into a world title fight to know that you can do that. And uh, obviously, 
you know, the world title, making the world title is not difficult. It's winning it and you can it. That's, that's the name of the game. And uh, obviously you've got to make sure you make the right moves at the right time. What about the uh, three minute rounds? Last time you, you made your debut, it was two minute rounds, and I know you were, you were frustrated in that format, weren't you? Yeah, I was. I was really frustrated with the two minutes. Um, I just didn't have enough time to plant my feet and find my, find my rhythm. And it was like, as soon as I found my rhythm, the, the bell had gone and I was on the stool. So um, with the three minutes now, I can really settle down, find my range. It's going to be so much better than doing two minutes. And the three minute round uh, format, it's going to give you maybe more time to develop your strategy. What about your opponent this time? Yeah. Marianne Salazar. Yeah, um, we've looked at a couple of videos with the coach, um, know what she's like, know her style. Um, I'm, I'm sure she's going to come in confident. I hope she does because I want to put on a show on Saturday night. I want to give uh, the crowd a good entertaining fight. You're going to be, uh, you're going to be able to control your emotions when you get in front of the adoring public because they're going to give you a massive reception. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll, be, I'll, be, I'll be using that to my advantage. I, I love the, the big crowds and the big arenas. I, 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 love, all, I love all of that. This is, this is what I'm made for. This is why I turn professional, you know. I, I, want to be, I want to be on the big shows. I want to be at the big time. I want to hopefully one day be boxing in Vegas, you know. I'm ready. And the publicity, the publicity, Frank, it's going to grow and grow, isn't it? I see, I see a big article about Nicola in uh, the Daily Telegraph, which Gareth Davis has, uh, has put, uh, yeah. put into words and, uh, you know, I mean, the profile, she's very much a flag bearer, not only for women's boxing, but for women's sport. Yeah, yes, I think, you know, she's a double Olympic gold medalist, so that obviously that, that is the case. She's, you know, she's probably, with great respect to a lot of fighters, more well known than any, than a lot of British boxers, but that's because of her achievements as, as and, you know, great achievements in the Olympics. You know, the most, uh, uh, the most successful Olympian. And uh, the bottom line is that's, that's good for her, that's good for the sport. It brings new eyeballs to the sport. It brings, you know, hopefully we get that crossover audience to people. You know, we're all boxing nuts here. We want to see the fights, but we want to get those, get the rest of the British public to be watching it. And uh, Nick Fur will obviously make a big contribution to that happen. Well, before we just uh, ask Josh about, uh, about the, the fight that he's got, and a very real fight it is against Kiko sitting by my side here, Josh, just tell us uh, about what your thoughts are about sharing the bill here and having this massive publicity uh, alongside Nicola. Just uh, tell us what you think about Nicola as a, as a sports person and, uh, and the fact that you're sharing the limelight with her. Well, many, not many people will know that um, me and Nicola started off in the same gym many, many months ago. Um, she used to beat me up in sparring. Um, she probably still got a number on me now, but you know, it's, it's good to have local face on the undercard, someone that, um, you know, Nicola's become a household name. Um, what she's done for Leeds and, and women's boxing in general is, is unbelievable. She's created history, um, you know, the golf horse boxing city, city centre just goes to show it. And uh, to have her on the undercard with myself, it's, it's real good because obviously myself, you know, boxing arena, giving hope for, for young lads to be in boxing and, and on the boxing gloves, but now young girls can see that they can go and achieve what Nicola's done and, uh, and inspire them, not just la you know, young lads, lasses as well. So, um, you know, it's brilliant to have a name like Nicola Adams on the card and um, the fans are in for a treat. So what about, what about your fight, Josh? How's, how's training gone? You look, you're looking good, Nick. I don't push up till that, do I? That was a shot. Training's gone on. It's been a long camp. And I think due to a bit of negativity, I think we needed to do that, but it's been good, it's given us time to, to work on stuff, uh, perfect things. Um, I'm, I'm feeling ready to go, I've been feeling ready to go for the last couple of weeks. Um, you know, super fit as always. But with a point like Kiko Martinez, you need to be, you need to be super fit, but um, you know, it's good to be back. Been uh, frustrating to have one being out, but it's good to be back. How long is it since you actually went into a fight knowing that you're 100% okay? Because you've had the You've had the problem with your shoulder, wasn't it? Which uh, you needed. Uh, my elbow, yeah, your elbow, elbow yeah, look, and you needed uh, you needed surgery. How 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 fit are you? How long did you actually have to fight with that problem? Yeah, it was one of them niggling things. It went on for some time, but you know, just uh, I'll just get on with it. And I don't think 
any boxer that goes through a camp and you send, there's always someone maybe who can cough, cold, or whatever. But um, this camp has been absolutely brilliant. You know, I haven't got the worry of uh, coming on from a training session or having to strap up my arm um, due to a niggling or whatever. So it's been just fully concentrated on, on learning and, and uh, concentrated on the job in hand. Working with, you, with your dad as ever, who's been uh, training you for this one. Tell us about that relationship, about uh, how you and Sean work together and what the, what, you know, how you get on. Uh, he's a pain in the ass, to be honest with you, I'll tell you straight. Um, it doesn't matter, but now listen, it, it's, it's good. You know, we've been, we've been um, together since uh, the early days. He's, he's looked after my career throughout the amateur days and, uh, and throughout the professional. And I'm not saying that lads who I relate to the trainer, um, you know, don't have good success, but it makes me a little bit sweet because we're family. Do you know what I mean? We'll get that win, we'll get that win, we'll get that victory, and you know, hopefully we'll go all the way together and get well tired. Does he dish it out at the times when he really, uh, Listen, when he really I, gives I've it? I've said often before, John, that I'd like to just punch him once. <laughs> just real hard, just punch him once. Um, but you can't do it, can you? If you can't, so um, you just got to listen to what he says. But it's not like him to dish it out to me, but um, you know, it's, it, it's character building as well, so you know, it's, it's a good character to live with. Now, you what about... Uh, enough, sorry, sorry. <laughs> you don't get sad enough. I'm in no danger. In case you, in case you had any uh, any misgivings, this is Sean who, who trains uh, who trains Josh and has done right the way through his career. He's done he's done a lot of things. Yeah, yeah, from early days, yeah, from uh, some of the way and we are where we're at now. It's hard work for us. Josh, I, I saw an interview which uh, Steve Lillis did with Kiko, and uh, Kiko suggested that uh, you don't have the punch to trouble him at that level. What, do you, what would you say to that? No. I'm, I'm fucked ah, basically. <laughs> no, no, I'm joking. But listen, look at any of my opponents who have got in um, on the ring, you know, anyone who's fought with a walk through me. Then none of them get out, you know, a big smile on the face. They've always come out marked and bruised. And uh, listen, I know what I've got in tank, and, I've, and often the final bell's rung. And I've got plenty left in tank, you know, I know I could have pursued them stoppages. You know, the last couple of fights when, you know, when they went final bell. Like Joe Brunger and Amagasa, people are stopping them when people start calling me a puncher then. You know, I know what other people are doing and uh, maybe I've reserved a little bit to when we get to the big level when it really matters. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll see on Saturday night and I know how a person reacts once, you know, he, he, can, he can bang a bit, can't he? Oh, listen, we've had now, you know, he, I've said many times he's, in many of interviews I've done, he's had more knockouts than his other fights. He knows how to hurt people and he knows how to get him away. And uh, I respect that. You know, he's been around the block and um, when I was still an amateur, he was fighting at, at the top level. So he, you don't lose that day throughout your career. Um, and that's why we always prepare and, and train for the very best opponent. And listen, Kiko's got no pressure on him. People will think that um, he's seen better days. But this is a massive opportunity. You know, he, he comes forward, he's tough. Um, he's been a world champion before, he knows what it's like to be a world champion, so he's going to want to get back there. I'm either acting all built up in bodies, and he knows that if he can beat me, then he's, he's, on to, uh, he's going on to world scene, but that's what makes it exciting there. And again, you know, sorry, sorry, you know, people talk about punching, whether you're a puncher or not. You know, if boxing was about the punch the hardest, you wouldn't need judges. And it's not about who punches the hardest, it's about who's got, who's got the best brain. And, you know, obviously if you can punch and pull, that's, that, that's great, but boxing is about the art of hitting and not being hit. And that's what, where you've got to work, the basis you work on. You get a knockout, that's all a stoppage, that's fantastic. But, you know, this guy, I think you're going to see a new, I think you're going to see a different Josh Lawrence than anyone. I think, you know, that, 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 that injury he had and the time he's had to prepare, I think you're going to see a totally different, different guy in trouble. Like, like I said, if we're, if we're about what we see on his blog, we'd all just get up off the table, go down to the dog room pub and, uh, and hit a punch machine. You know, the punch machine is like getting bruises. So we've just got to do that one with it. It's not about that, it's about being entertaining, throwing a lot of punches, you know, being smart, like I say, and, and, and you know, having science and art boxing. Well, that's... Uh
al señor Rodríguez y agradecía vos por, por la gran preparación que tuvo durante las 10 semanas y a Frank Warren por aguantarme con antelación para, para poder prepararme al 100% y la verdad que llego eh, muy motivado y sin excusa ninguna, sin lesiones, sin dolores, sin, sin, sin ningún motivo para, 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 para perderlo. Entonces eh, todo ha apuntado bien para esta pelea, llego al mil por mil y, y, el, y, el, y el sábado 13 lo, lo veréis. El domingo 14 cuando se levante Frank Warren se levantará con un 25-1, que es el pasador Warrington se levantará con, con un 25-1 que que será la única derrota que tendrá en, en su carrera con Pico Martínez. Después de todo, quiero decir gracias a todos mis coches, a mi equipo, a mi compañía de Villa Box. Quiero decir gracias a Frank Warren por esta oportunidad. Estaba eh, entrenando en 10 días para esta lucha. Fue un campo muy difícil de entrenar. Y estoy seguro de que el próximo Saturday estaremos en la lucha. Sunday, uh, Josh Warrington uh, wake up with a, with a loss in his, in his record. Do you think he's underestimated you? Creo que no, creo que es un atleta, creo que es una persona seria en su trabajo. Creo que sabe que le viene una pelea dura con un posado duro y la verdad que él creo que es el único que no me está subestimando. I think now, I know he's a super athlete, he's a very professional fighter, uh, and I think he, he maybe is the, the only person that he is not uh, under, uh, he, he's not, he is the only person that he is uh, respected. Respect do you think that you can have fought and will fight at a different level to what he's seen before? Sí, creo que va a tener un rival durante los 12 asaltos eh, sin cansarse, con, con, con una exigencia de trabajo que, que va a tener que hacer para, para ganarme, para tenerme a raya y creo que va a ser el, el boxeador que, que va a querer ganarle, ¿no? Desde, desde el principio hasta el final. I think yes, I think uh, I'm his uh, most uh, important opponent at the moment and I think that he, he needs to, to do the, his special work. All the 12 rounds. Is your career on the line? Sí, por eso me estás exigiendo durante las 10 semanas al al mil por mil día tras día. Yes, and probably this is my my hard training camp of of all my career. Frank, your your thoughts as the promoter of this? It's uh, it's on paper. I mean, it's uh, it's got all the makings, hasn't it? Because if this guy has still got the big fight left in him, and he's telling us. He's prepared long and assiduously. It could be special. Well, he has. He's had, as I said at the start of the conference, he's had was it ten weeks to prepare. So you know, he's not on. And you've got to look at him. He looks cut and so forth. And the same for Josh. But Josh wants to become world champion. Josh wants to move on. He's got to be. And that's it. That's what it's about. You know, he's, he's got to be able to keep going after him. We believe that's the case. You know, Josh has got a. He's got a good ranking in every governing body. And you know, keep going to be looking for that. You know, for him, and I mean with a great respect, this is a large chance for him, for him to grab an opportunity to fight for a world title. So he ain't coming to make up the numbers, he's going to come and fight. Yep, it's a uh, potential that's keeping him relevant, I guess, as a, as a genuine <coughs> title contender if he can come through this, and it would be a, a big setback for Josh were it not to be a win, which is kind of what boxing should be all about. Well, it is, but I'm not biased. I don't know if it's not the case. <laughs> well, that's, uh, that's my little offering from up here. You're all here representing uh, representing newspapers, radio stations, television networks, etc. There'll be a chance for one-on-one -on -one interviews in a moment or two. All the guys will help you out with that. But uh, for the moment, let's have a few questions from the floor. Anybody, uh, anybody got anything to ask? Different gender and different life, just, just another boxer in the gym. Um, if anything, she'll probably more stand in, stand in the gym there. So, you know, she, she had a bit of a special treatment because she were, no one wanted to mess with her. Um, I were, when I started boxing, about six or seven years old, I was about two foot and 
about three stones, so the number is about, about 15. Um, so yeah, I would have, because Nicola's only small and I as well, she were, she were on inspiring partner of the game with. Um, but listen, it's good to see what she's gone on and achieved. It's you know, representing the country around the world and, and making history brilliant. This time uh, this will be different because I have more experience, I have more experience. Uh, I was training uh, during uh, 10 weeks, very, very hard. And I know that uh, this is uh, the fight that uh, I need to, to, to still uh, active in, in my career. And just follow up, how does Kiko rate Josh Warrington against Carl Francis? He's a uh, Josh. He's a very good fighter, and I think uh, uh, a fight between Carl against uh, uh, Scott uh, will be close with, with him because he's very good. But I think he's not ready. He, he can be uh, a better fighter in the next fights, but not yet. Well, you never know you're ready, you know, it's give me an opportunity and we'll see if I'm ready. Um, this is what it's about when it, this is about getting to, to that stage and uh, taking fights like this is to, to see yourself, you've got it, what it takes to, to be a world champion. Me and my team believe we do and uh, if I accept it all, I'm going to give everything I can to be one of these first world champions um, and going in the way against a name like Kiko and a, and a fight like Kiko is, um, is brings you the best out of you. And I think we'll see another level to, to Josh Gordon. But at the same time, I'll take this opportunity to say a massive thank you to everyone who's, who's come out and supported. Absolutely phenomenal numbers again um, of our tickets. You know, the, this week has been brilliant. Open workouts, you know, meeting greets. There'll, there'll be numbers there in tomorrow waiting. And uh, you know what to do, guys. Very plenty of noise. And I think Frank and, and BT and Box Nation are looking for a treat. I don't know, I don't even think they know what to expect. It's going to be, it's going to be noisy and hostile, and um, it's going to be a good show. Josh, do, do you feel like this is the last step to a world title fight for you? I think so, Bill. I think it's been, um, I think it's been dragging on for some time now. You know, my name being pulled by other fighters, um, and then no end, end points happening. You know. Like I said, me and my team know what we want and we, we know what we want to be. We want to win a world title, not just you know, have a party and, and, and retire. We want to win a world title and, and stay champion for a couple of years. We don't want to go to have the big fights at Ellen Road and, and take, the, take the crazy leagues to lots of Vegas and, 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 and you know, smash up casinos and stuff like that. That's what, that's what we want to do. But, um, it's about timing. I'm 26 years old. Time's on my side and um, I'm just about to get into the peak. And, we win a world title in the next year, we could stay there for a couple of years. You've spoken about fighting at Ellen Road, have you been in Frank's here about that yet? Yeah, 100%, you know, I think uh, it's, it's, it's a tasty one, really, having a big um, stadium fight, you know, having Lice and Nicola all on the card and um, some of Frank's other talented fighters. Obviously, the timing is going to be a certain time of year, it's got to be in between 
season. Don't want the Lord of Nutters smashing the picture up on Golden Post when, uh, when it's mid season. So, Tiger's going to be right for that one. But I think, you know, I just want to win a world title, no matter where he is. Could be in my back garden, could be in the arena, don't matter. Get a world title and then we, we've got a position where we can go back to on the road in the future. Uh, tickets still available, Frank? There are tickets still available, just a few, so get them while you can because it's going to be a fantastic night. We're all going to have a good time and hopefully celebrate this man's victory. That's what I'm Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much, everybody. We'll have some face-to-face uh, -face photographs and then interviews available. Be there on Saturday night because it is going to be a special sort of occasion, I'm sure.